now I want to talk briefly about <clears throat> um, automating some of these complex problems. So like I mentioned earlier, we do a lot of part sweeping and variable sweeping. So depending on maybe the heater length is different or the clamps are thicker or something like that, you can apply different voltages. They'll be in different conditions, that sort of thing. I manage these in a, excuse me, in a table that um, has all these different parameters together. So this is what that looks like. And this master CSV file uh, is split into the part numbers that I would be working with in Coreform qubit and the import file. And then to Moose, I would be sending either single variables that would be modified uh, that I want to sweep, or Moose itself has a parametric modeling uh, system in there too, where I can put min maxes and have it actually sweep through those parameters. So this is what that step file would look like, or that uh, CSV would look like. Then this all feeds into a master Python script, which is straightforward. It's you're importing your table and then you are pushing the relevant part numbers that you want to assess into qubit and then the test number. And what you're getting out of that is a qubit uh, export or an Exodus export that's that I name after the test number. That way I can keep track of it. You can also add uh, additional Python in here to add a new column to the input CSV to say, this is your ass run solution. And then finally, I'm pushing this to Moose using um, the command line parameters that let you modify specific variables in that specific run. And then looking into the Python script, so the, the Python API, uh, as as I use it, as I see it, is there's the read-only information gathering API, which lets you get information about the volumes and surfaces so that you can process it, um, make decisions on, and kind of organize how the flow is going to work in the script. And then the second mode is the command API, which is the qubit command language uh, decorated with qubit.command that you can issue from Python. And this is good because it lets you visually also separate parts of the program that are doing one versus the other. And again, documentation there is great. And you can explore it in the GUI and get the, the commands you need out from there. And as I was working through this demonstration, there are you know patterns of part numbers or pat part numbers are repeated. So I would be the one doing the exploratory work to find out what these part numbers are and then document them in the input CSV and then run them through the Python script. So I would mesh the first of a kind of these things, like I would mesh a heater, I would pull the journal file commands, build the scripting from them, and then um, put the, the uh, part numbers into that input file, and then iterate through using the Python flow control. And so sometimes you get lucky and... Um, Orform qubit is, is smart enough to be able to deal with similar enough geometry. So in the demonstration, there were curved heaters and straight heaters. And where I start from is saying, well, if I can do a simple solution like a straight heater and how, how we mesh that from the journal file, what if I just applied it directly to the curved heaters? And sometimes it works. And, uh, and qubit's pretty good about that, which means that the code is identical. In fact, in this segment, only the part number is different. And I was able to keep the rest of the code the same. So now this starts to go into my library of functions that I can reference. And as I run into similar parts out in the world, I already have a meshing scheme to address this. Next is looking at the Moose input file and, and how this script interacts with Moose itself. So um, for again, for engineers that are just getting into this, the um, Moose has this uh, command line usage where you can change, <clears throat> you can inject changes in variables without modifying the input file itself. So that lends itself to Python scripting, and it it uses kind of this directory structure definition to reach into the blocks in your Moose input file. So where you have kernels, then the a kernel subblock and this coefficient variable, you're doing the same thing. You're reaching in uh, from the command line to make this modification, and and in that way you can iterate through. Then, if you're doing a parameter study, Moose does that too, and there is an input. You would add 
the parameter study block to your input file and then do exactly the same call with your high low values <clears throat> from the command line when your script runs and then from there you can you know kick it out to your batch scheduler or if you're running local you can um have it wait and run on its own and so now i want to briefly talk about um automatic meshing uh within within both of these tools so this is one of the curved heaters I was talking about. These are just the generic parameters for it. Um, sometimes you find yourself in a situation where if your mesh isn't correct or isn't good enough, you can start to introduce some pretty unphysical solutions like metal wrapping up over itself or expanding in weird ways. And some of that has to do with the, the um, accuracy of the mesh to the physical world and the other part is the gradient of the solution in that mesh. And for the gradient of the solution in that mesh, um, Moose, it, Moose has this adaptive meshing tool. Um, for, the, for the other one, the similarity of the part to the real world, Coreform Qubit has excellent analysis tools like analyzing the Jacobian and, and that sort of thing to make sure that your description is, is appropriately accurate. Um, but looking at the Moose auto measure, it's going to look at places where the solution has a high gradient and it's going to add additional nodes to try to give you more physical solutions and stabilize the answer. And, um, it's great, uh, but it is very intense and it's very computationally expensive. You can see how the node count can, uh, can increase quite dramatically here. But what is nice about it is that um, the auto mesher has, it, it creates its own checkpoints as it tries to iterate through uh, making finer and finer meshes. And while the simulation is running, you can actually pull these out and you can load them into Paraview or you can load them into Qubit uh, to take a look where certain physical points of interest are going to be, like physics-based points of interest is going to be. So if I didn't understand electromagnetism, if I didn't understand how heat worked through one of these heaters, and I didn't quite know where to put the nodes, I can start the program with the auto mesher, let it create one or two of these meshes, and then see, okay, this corner is thermally interesting or electrically interesting. And then it may be faster for me to remove nodes in places that aren't interesting and put more nodes here instead of waiting for the auto mesher to do it. And once you do that, it's the same thing. You're importing the geometry, you're decomposing the features, you're, <clears throat> you're doing the meshing on a single part, iterate uh, on the journal instructions, and then do it for all the remaining parts in your assembly. And that can make pretty dramatic differences in how quickly you solve a problem and and how accurately you solve a problem. And in my line of work, accuracy and speed are very important because a lot of these companies, you know, the, the cost for a consultant or a, a person dedicated to modeling and the computational cost, you know, are, are uh, pretty equally competing line items in the budget. So that's, that's how you can get some edge to that. 